Happy Sabbath to uh, everyone. Uh, we give honor to the Father. We give uh, praise and glory to His Son, Jesus Christ. Uh, today is February 12th, 2022. And uh, we're happy that you have come and decided to uh, watch this video. Uh, every week, I format the first 15 minutes or so um, is strictly the reading of the laws. And then followed by that, uh, we move into the topic. Um, leave your questions in the comment uh, section if you have any questions after watching this video. If you would like to uh, learn more and uh, find out how you can even uh, come and fellowship with us uh, live and direct, please leave your uh, contact information in the um, uh, comment bar. Uh, we'd love to uh, uh, have you come fellowship with us here at Children of Israel Ministries. With no further ado, uh, we will get into the reading of the laws. The laws, Ecclesiasticus chapter 39, verse 1. But he that giveth his mind to the law of the Most High and is occupied in the meditation thereof will seek out the wisdom of all the ancient and be occupied in prophecies. He will keep the sayings of the renowned men and where subtle parables are, he will be there also. He will seek out the secrets of grave sentences and be conversant in dark parables. He shall serve among great men and appear before princes. He will travel through strange countries, for he hath tried the good and the evil among men. Not to eat leavened food. Put uh, the next one up above it. To destroy, <clears throat> to destroy leavened food on the fourteenth day of Nisan, day uh, one of Passover, Exodus twelve and fifteen. Seven days shall ye eat unleavened bread. Even the first day ye shall put away leaven out of your house. For whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. Not to eat leavened food on all seven days of Passover. Exodus chapter 13, verse 3. And Moses said unto the people, Remember this day in which ye came out from Egypt, out of the house of bondage. For by strength of hand, the Lord brought you out from this place. There shall no leavened bread be eaten. Not to eat mixture containing leaven all seven days of Passover. Exodus 12 and 20. Ye shall eat nothing leaven. In all your habitations shall ye eat unleavened bread. Not to see leaven in your dominion all seven days of Passover. Exodus chapter 13, verse 7. Unleavened bread shall be eaten seven days, and there shall no leavened bread be seen with thee. Neither shall there be leaven seen with thee in all thy quarters. Not to find leaven in your domain all seven days of Passover. Exodus 12 and 19. Seven days shall there be no leaven found in your house. For whosoever eateth that which is leaven, even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he be a stranger or born in the land. To eat unleavened bread on the first night of Passover. Exodus chapter 12, verse 18. In the first month, on the 14th day of the month, at even, ye shall eat unleavened bread unto the one and twentieth day of the month at even. To relate the Exodus from Egypt on that night, Exodus 13 and 8. And thou shalt show thy son in that day, saying, 
This is done because of what which because of that which the Lord did un, unto me when I came forth out of Egypt. To hear the shofar on the first day of Tishri, Numbers chapter 29, verse 1. And in the seventh month, on the first day of the month, ye shall have an holy convocation. Ye should do no servile work. It is a day of blowing the trumpets unto you. To dwell in a tent for seven days of Feast of Tabernacle. Leviticus 23 and 42. Ye, ye shall dwell in booths seven days. All that are Israel, I'm sorry, all that are Israel born shall dwell in booths. To make tents for Feast of Tabernacle. Leviticus chapter 23 verse 40. And ye shall take you on the first day the boughs of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, and the boughs of thick trees, and willows of the brook. And ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. Each man must give a half shackle annually. Exodus 30 and 13. This they shall give. Everyone that passeth among them that are numbered. Have a shackle after the shackle of the sanctuary. A shackle is 20 uh, ger geras. geras. And half shackle shall be the offering of the Lord. The courts must calculate to determine when a new month begins. Exodus chapter 12, verse 2. This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. To afflict oneself and cry out before God in time, times of calamity. Numbers 10 and 9. And if you go too far, too you know, far. I'm, and if you go too, okay, too war in your land against the enemy that oppressed, thee, oppressed you, then ye shall blow and along with the trumpet, and ye shall be remembered before the Lord your God, and ye shall be saved from your enemies. To marry a wife by means of ketubah, written thing, <clears throat> and kiddushin, Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 13. If any man take a wife and go in unto her and hate her and give occasions of speech against her and bring up an evil name upon her and say, I took this woman and when I came to her, I found her not a maid. Not to marry a whore. Deuteronomy 23 and 18. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore or the price of a dog into the house of the Lord thy God for any vow. For even both these are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. Not to withhold food, clothing, and sexual relations from your wife. Exodus chapter 21, verse 10. If he take him another wife, her food, her raiment, and her duty of marriage, shall he not diminish. To have children with one's wife. Genesis 1 and 28. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. To issue a divorce by means of a get document. Deuteronomy chapter 24, verse 1. When a man hath taken a wife and married her, and it come to pass that she find no favor in his eyes, because he hath found some uncleanness in her, then let him write her a bill of divorcement, and give it in her hand and send her out of his house. A man must not remarry his ex-wife after she has married someone else. Deuteronomy 24 and 4. Her former husband, which sent her away, may not take her again to be his wife. After that, she is defiled. For it is an abomination before the Lord, and thou shalt not cause the land to sin which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. To perform the duty of a husband's brother, 
Deuteronomy chapter 25, verse 5. If brethren dwell together and one of them die and have no child, the wife of the dead shall not marry without unto a stranger. Her husband's brother shall go in unto her and take her to him to wife and perform the duty of a husband's brother unto her. To spit in the face of the brother who denies the wife of the deceased. Deuteronomy 25 and 9. Then shall his brother's wife come unto him in the presence of the elders and lose his, sh lose his shoe from off his foot and spit in the face and shall answer and say, so shall it be done unto that man that will not build up his brother's house. The widow must not remarry until the ties with her brother-in-law are removed. Deuteronomy chapter 25, verse 5. If brethren dwell together and one of them die and have no child, the wife of the dead shall not marry without unto a stranger. Her husband's brother shall go in unto her and take her to him to wife and perform the duty of a husband's brother unto her. The court must find one who sexually subdues a maid. Exodus 22 and 16. And if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed and lie with her, he shall surely endow her to be his wife. If her father utterly refuses to give her unto him, he shall pay money according to the dowry of virgins. The rapist must marry his victim if she is unwed. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 29. Then the man that lay with her shall give unto the damsel's father 50 shekels of silver, and she be his wife, because he hath humbled her. He may not put her away all his days. He is never allowed to divorce her. Deuteronomy 22 and 29. Then the man that lay with her shall give unto the damsel's father 50 shackles of silver, and she be his wife because he had humbled her. He may not pay, I'm sorry, he may not put her away all his days. The slanderer must remain married to his wife. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 19. And they shall immerse him in a hundred shekels of silver and give them unto the father of the damsel, because he hath brought up an evil name upon a virgin of Israel, and she shall be his wife. He may not put her away all his days. He must not divorce her. Deuteronomy 22 and 19. And they shall immerse him in a hundred shackles of silver and give them unto the father of the damsel, because he had brought up an evil name upon a virgin of Israel, and she shall be his wife. He may not put her away all his days. To fulfill the laws of bitter water, jealous of a wife. Numbers chapter 5, verse 30. Or when the spirit of jealousy cometh upon him, and he be jealous over his wife, he shall set the woman before the Lord, and the priest shall execute upon her all this law not to put oil on her meal offering, a jealous of wife. Numbers 5 and 15. Then shall the man bring his wife unto the priest, and he shall bring her offering for her. Uh, the tenth part of an alpha, Ifa. I'm sorry, the tenth part of an ephah of barley meal, he shall pour no oil upon it, not put frankincense thereon, for it is an offering of jealousy an offering of memorial, bringing iniquity to remembrance. Okay. And we'll start with 137 next time. One thirty-seven next week. All right, so um, this week's lesson, I do have a title. <clears throat> and
and the title is um, Who Are We? Don't Call Me Black No More. Who are we? Don't call me black no more. This week, um, I'm working with children on uh, one of the songs is Lift Every Voice and Sing. And, you know, I, I'm saying to the children how that song or this song, Lift Every Voice and Sing, is considered the Negro national anthem. And, and me using the word Negro, all three grade levels going in the uproar. Ah, 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 just gasping away. One fifth grade class, I referenced um, the miseducation of the Negro by Dr. Carter G. Um, uh, Woodson. The miseducation of the Negro. Could you please not say that word? It's the title of the book. <laughs> I had to tell, you know, tell the boy, this was a fifth grade. And so, but our name has changed constantly. Negro, uh, African-American, Black. Uh, we've been called everything under the sun. We have been called everything under the sun. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 37. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonish astonishment. Thou shalt become an astonishment. Oh, right there. An astonishment. Let's go to uh, dictionary.com. Astonishment. Thou shall become an astonishment. Okay. So as a noun, What does this say? Can you read that? Astonishment. That's the word here, astonishment. Overpowering wonder, surprise, or surprise. Amazement. Okay, let's see if there are any verbs in here, maybe. maybe. Let's see. Okay, so only, only nouns. All right, so let's go to this word, amazement. Uh, especially the, the obsolete. Okay. I see. Go ahead. I'm starting with one. What is it? Amazement? Uh, yes. Yeah, overwhelming right. surprise or astonishment. Uh huh. Right, go ahead. Right. Uh, stupefaction. Stupefaction. Frenzy. frenzy mm -hmm. And perplexity. Okay. And consternation. And we don't know what these words mean. So let's look these words up. The state of being stupefied. <laughs> like <that. laughs> That's state word of being know. stupid. We know that verb, yeah, right? So, so the Lord is saying, thou shall become an astonishment. Dumb. Thou shall become dumb. You shall, you shall not have any knowledge. Okay? Um, what was that other word that it, that it had? Right? So per perplexity, uh, the state of being perplexed, confusion, uncertainty. And that's what it became of the children of Israel. We confused, uncertain what, what the day is going to bring, what tomorrow is going to bring. Okay? So go back to... Um, Deuteronomy 28 and 37. Deuteronomy 28 37. And thou shalt 
shall become an astonishment. So now we know astonishment. You shall become dumb. You shall become confounded. You shall be you shall be full of uncertainty. Read. And thou shall become an astonishment. A proverb. A proverb. Let's look that word up. You shall become a proverb. So what does the dictionary say in defining a proverb? Go ahead, read. A sharp popular saying, a sharp popular, popular saying, usually of unknown and ancient origin, mm -hmm. that expresses ex expectably some commonplace truth or useful thought. All niggas are lazy. All niggas eat watermelon. All niggas eat chicken. All, and, uh, um, and so on and so forth. We, we, we know the, the nasty slangs that are used to uh, negatively uh, uh, stereotype us, right? All these negative slang phrases that is used to um, paint the picture of who we are. So the Bible says, you're going to become an astonishment. You're going to become a, a proverb. Okay. Um, read number number four. Number four. Bi yeah, Bible. I'm saying maxim mm -hmm. or oracle. Let me see that right. Oracular. Ocular utterance requiring the in interpretation. And this is who, right, which the example that I just gave in terms of watermelon, chicken, yada, 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 uh, you know, I thought was a funny scene as a, as a child, a teenager. There was a movie out called Soul Man. It, it was um, uh, Cheech and Chong's daughter, Ray Chong. Uh, and so she she was in the movie, and the white guy was in the movie. I can't I don't know who his name was. And the scene was um, he was envisioning uh, um, she because he had a crush on her, and he saw the stereotype of hypo go go saying to her, go give me my hypothermia needle. And some watermelon. <laughs> Y'all ever see that that that, that, that particular uh, scene? I remember that scene. Where he told her to go get a hypodermic scene. I think I remember that, but I, I didn't know what the name of the movie is. That the name of the movie was called Soul Man. Um, with Let me see if I can. Cheech and Chong. Well, that's Chong. I mean, Cheech is. Chong, Chong's daughter. Um, right on Chong. Okay, I know. Yeah. I know her. And I see why. I may have spelled that wrong. Here we go. Denison. Uh oh, what happened? It's y'all can see it, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh well. Oh. Hold on. Wait. 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 I got. I got. I got. Um. Bear with me. Bear with me. Bear with me. Bear with me. I got to share from this computer. Bear with me. Oh. Uh, I mean, his daughter. Is she playing the running? Yeah, what? I don't know if she played in the running. Yeah. I. I just was never fond of her acting. I just thought she was horrible acting. But her, her father's charming. Mm -hmm. So you know
I'm out of know, like if you were thought she was a horrible actor or actress. All right, so uh, I don't own this video. Um, Children of Israel does not own this video. Um, uh, as you see, it may uh, have some inappropriate scenes and language in this video. Uh, for our purpose, we want to show how um, we are often portrayed in movies um, and, and what have you. Stereotypes and words. Let's see if we can. Wrong, wrong, wrong. <laughs> no, right movie. Right movie. I thought that was the thing I was after. Right, we're going to get it after this. We're going to walk with him because I don't want to take a lot of time searching for this, this movie. I mean, searching for this particular scene in this computer going slow. Is this the, come on, computer. All right, let's see what, hopefully this is the scene. Oh, okay, we go. Raspberry tart, Mark? Oh, no, thank you. I really could need another bite. All my life, I've only been able to think about one thing. White women. And now, alas, I'm going to have one. <laughs> Bundy Dunbar, how many times have I asked you not to watch that thing at the dinner table? <laughs> So that's that's what's going on in the thought of the, of the little boy. We saw the thought yeah. was going on in the mother. No, he's. <laughs> Did I tell you, Mark's going to Harvard Law School on scholarship. Yes, you did. Don't get my hair all into my hypodermic needle, bitch. <laughs> Here's some more watermelon while you're at it. Yes, dear. White fat ass slut. What you looking at? So, remember the scene, scene. And I thought back then, I laughed, I laughed, you know, crazy hard at it. You know, it's funny. I still find it funny. And at the same time, though, when you put it in connection with, with the scripture, 37 again, just up to, up to the word proverb. Okay, Deuteronomy 28 and 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb. So a proverb, that's how we are viewed. That was 1980s when that movie came out. You know, but these stereotypes have not changed. What, it's 30 years later? <laughs> it's 30 plus years later, and those stereotypes have not changed. Go ahead, read on. Let's go ahead. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, a byword. And a byword. So now we want to, let's look that word up. Byword. Okay. So we, we got, um, we got astonishment. We got proverb. Now, byword. Okay. Because this is one of the curses that was going to come upon the children of Israel. Go ahead. I word, a word of praise associated with some person or thing. A characteristic expression, typical greeting or the like. Mm -hmm. A word. So saying, hey, doctor, doctor so and so. Uh, hey, uh, uh, um, that's the mechanic. What's up, mechanic? 
These would be bywords. And those could be used in a positive connotation. But then there's negative connotation. Uh, nigga, uh, went back. Um, you know, even, even they, they uh, address um, other uh, chink. You know, even those are, are, are by words, right? But we're we trying to identify us. Okay, go ahead. Hey, number four. Associated, okay, you want me to go to number school? four. Number four. An epithet, often, I'm sorry, yeah, often of scorn. Often of scorn. So when they use that N I G G E R word, they're using that word to be mean, to be scornful, to dig, and so on and so forth. They're not using that word uh, for nothing, nothing positive. That word is not being used for nothing positive. And we in our own community, we hear it so much, we call one another and then we say, well, we can use that word because this is a term of endearment. No, it's not. You've just been brainwashed. Moving on. Um, go ahead and read verse 37. And a byword among all nations, whether the Lord shall lead thee. Okay, whether the Lord shall lead thee. Okay, and so that's what we've become. Um, I'm going to take a look at this article. Okay. This is the New York Times. This is the New York Times um, by Isabel. Make sure you all can see this. Isabel Wilkerson, January 31st, 1989. The title, African-Americans favored or African-American favored by many of America's blacks. And who's in this newspaper clipping? This is, this article is dealing with um, our very own, here he is, right there right there yeah. okay yeah, Jesse Jackson, yeah. uh so uh, please read a, a movement led a movement led by reverend jesse jackson to call black african americans has met with both rousing approval and dc skepticism in a debate that is coming to symbolize the role and history of blacks in the in this country. Go ahead. The term used for years in inter intellectual, intellectual. intellectual circles is gaining currency among many offer other blacks who say it it's used is a sign that they are accepting their difficult past, resolving a long uh, ambivalence. Ambivalence. Never heard that to word for Africa. Let me read if you don't mind. Thank you. The term is already shown up in the newest grade school textbooks being adopted by several black run radio stations and newspapers around the country and appeared in the titles of popular books and in the conversations of many blacks as they warm to the idea and speak of visiting Africa one day. For many, the issue is already settled, not only in their minds, but in their hearts. Whenever I go to Africa, said Roger Wilkins, a senior fellow at the Institute of Policy Studies, I feel like a person with legitimate place to stand on this earth. This is the name for all the feelings I've had all these years. Mr. Wilkins' feelings are not shared by all skeptics, many of them older Blacks who have lived through previous name changes are resisting the move. Notice that many have lived through uh, previous name changes because every 30 years or so, the, the, we are called something else. Sometimes less than that. Sometimes less, right. Okay, so um, there are those who at the time of this article was like, nah, you know, I'm tired of this. Um, leaders of the movement to change the language say it was 
concern about those problems and growing involvement in the fight to end racial separation in South Africa that led to the search for a clearer group identity. So we're looking for a group identity. Why are we looking for a group identity? Go to Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 4. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 4. The book of Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 4. And, and thou, even thyself, shall discontinue from thy heritage. Thou shalt discontinue from thine heritage. From, now let's look that word up, heritage. Heritage. What is heritage? What does that word mean? Okay. Um, start with number one and number two. A heritage, something that is handed down from the past as a tradition. Mm. Okay, that's heritage. Number two. Number two, something that comes or belongs to one person or per belongs to. Uh huh. Uh huh. And inherited lot of or portion. Okay. So heritage, your name, your land, your belongings. The Bible is saying that all the promises of the Bible that we would discontinue from our inheritance, our heritage. Okay. Read verse four again. Jeremiah seventeen and four. <laughs> Jeremiah 17 and 4, and, and, and thou, even thyself, shall discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee, and I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. Mm -hmm. For ye have kindled a fire in my anger, which shall burn forever. Which shall burn forever, the Lord is saying. I'm angry with you. I'm angry with you. I got to cut you off. I must punish you. This is what the Lord is saying. Okay? So, <clears throat> this article that we were reading um, is saying that we, Jesse Jackson, to change our name to be called African American. This is deeper than just name recognition, said Mr. Jackson, who, along with others, called for the change at a news conference in late December. Black tells you about skin color and what side of the town you live on. African-American evokes discussion of the world. We're not African-American. To, to, when you are uh, stating who you are, Danish, Irish, French, um, Nigerian, etc., you are saying the bloodline you come from, the father you descend from. So if we go about and say that we are African-American, then we're saying that we descended from two Caucasian men, Leo Scipius Africanus and Amerigo Vespucci. You're saying you descended from two Caucasian men, Ponder on that. Instead of saying, I'm an Israelite, I descended from a man named Jacob whose name was changed to Israel. He is my father. When you call yourself an Israelite, that's what you're saying. So now, are we just making things up or do we know through the evidence, the text, and so forth, that no, nah, this is who we are, biologically speaking. And so we seek to find that information to substantiate the claims that we are making. Okay. So now.
let's take a look at oh come on now share there we go okay we're going to take a look at um some information out of this book. Let me let me show the let me show the title book. Show the title of the book. We're going to show some pages, some information out of this book called "From Babylon to Timbuktu" by uh, Rudolf R. Windsor. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna look at a few pages from there. We're gonna look at one image, one page out of this book called Hebrewism of West Africa by Joseph Williams. And we're looking at this book because Rudolf Windsor references this book. So we're going to look at pages 88, 89, 90, 91, and 92 of uh, From Babylon to Timbuktu. Here we are. It says, I'm at the, starting with the bottom paragraph. <clears throat> at the same time that the Jews were migrating westward across the Sudan from Ethiopia, they also migrated southward from Libya, Tunisia, Algeria, and Morocco to the fertile region between the Senegal and Niger rivers. When the Jews from the north and the east met between these two rivers, they established a confluence or crossroad in West Africa, where men could exchange their culture, ideas, and merchandise. These Jewish migrations went on with great, go to the next page, said these Jewish migrations went on with great frequency about 300 AD. And they continued, can you all see the, mm -hmm. see the words very well? And they continued with the utmost regularity for 1200 years. Joseph J. Williams points out the course of the Jewish migration from Northeastern Africa. So let's take a look at, well, let me read. He writes that the Jews migrated up the Nile, passing Memphis, um, Elephantain, Khartoum, and then they turned west at Kordofan in central Sudan. In the region of the White Nile, Williams thinks some Jews settled in the country of the Shiluk in the southern Sudan at Uganda. He continues by tracing the migration from Kordofan, going west, to Darfur, Lake Chad, Kano, and then to the countries of the Niger River. Well, let's take a look at this map that uh, Windsor and Rudolph, I mean, uh, Windsor and Williams uh, is, is speaking of. So here we go. So this page comes out of the book, Hebrewism in West Africa. So 70 AD, the, uh, they are fleeing Jerusalem. 70 AD, the children of Israel are fleeing Jerusalem. And so they're leaving. Memphis is in Egypt, okay? 
and they continue to go down uh, to go south along the Nile River, okay, Moro, Khartoum, and then they go west into Kordofan. And this is where he said he uh, suggested even some uh, would continue to go uh, southwest into Shiluk, okay? This is where, this is the path, the route for which um, the children of Israel um, went when they fled Jerusalem 70 AD, okay? Back to Rudolf Windsor. Continue on page 89. He says, the original habitation of the Sangai people was Guangua, uh, Kukia, or Kuka. This place was situated in the Dindi country and known as Dindinya, lying near the Niger River on the northwestern border of what is now the modern state of Nigeria. Many scholars think that the Sangai people came from Egypt or Ethiopia because there exists many Egyptian culture com uh, complexes among them. For example, the preparation of the dead body for burial. So he's saying, hey, look at all these, these similar cultural uh, things taking place. Zael Yamini came to Kukia about 300 AD, an ancient abode of the Sangat tribe. He established a line of kings known as the Zat, Ja, or the Dia dynasty. This founder of the first Sudanic dynasty in Western Africa was a black Jew. I'm gonna read that sentence again. This founder of the first Sudanic dynasty in Western Africa was a black Jew. His name is sometimes written Za'al Ayam. Joseph J. Williams says that a citizen of Timbuktu named Abderrahman uh, Abder Asadi wrote in 1652 in his book, Tariqa es Sudan, History of the Sudan, that Za'al Za Ayaman was derived from Zamin el Yemen which means he has come from Yemen. Zael, Yemeni, came to the Niger country by way of Wargal or Wargala in central Algeria. Wargala was a great trading center of the black Jews. Wargala was a great trading center of the black Jews. Dr. Barth and Professor Godby say that Za, the founder of the first Jewish dynasty, established his capital later at Gao on the eastern upper Niger River. The Arabs, Moors, and the Sudanic writers attribute to the ancient Black um, African Hebrews the establishment of the first empires, the erection of the first public buildings in the country, the construction of the first canal and irrigation. Let's go to the next page. Irrigation systems and the institution of a social economic regime, which still survives in all Saharan communities. By what factors? Can we explain the emergence of black Hebrew hegemony and leadership over the indigenous tribes? The answer is simple. The Jews came into the Western Sudan from Northern and Eastern Africa as a result of the chain of commercial and persecutory migrations. The Jews had settled among the most civilized people throughout the ages. They adopted new methods from other people and left their material, education, and moral imprint among the people with whom they resided. For many centuries, the Hebrews had to employ great physical and psychological initiative. They could not afford to be complacent or uh, apathetic. They were hated. 
So I want y'all to hold on to that in terms of what they had to do. Hold on to what he just said. They were hated as we go further into the information that is revealed tonight. Mm -hmm. So apathy could mean cultural stagnation or death. It says, so apathy could mean cultural stagnation or death. The Jews imported into the Western part of Africa a superior material, education, and moral culture since after 300 AD. And this cultural advancement was not duplicated or exceeded unto the ascendancy of the Mohammedan uh, leader, Mansa Kankan Musa of Mali in 1312 AD, the Mali Empire. In the third and fourth centuries AD, the Africans on the West Coast did not possess the cultural superiority of the Africans. On the North and East Coast, it says the Africans of the West Coast did not possess the cultural superiority. The Black Jews had an advantage over the African tribes. They carried their culture, history, laws, and written records with them. This assured them a constant precedent for the development of a higher social organization. Because of the stability of the Black Jewish culture, the Jews were not absorbed into the autochronous population, meaning the population that already existed in the land. Because they came with all their culture, they didn't give way to the culture of the people who, had, who already lived there. Okay? In fact, the Jews absorbed some of the native tribes. No, we're not going to give way to you. You're going to give way to us. You're going to fall in love with our way of living. You're going to give way to us. The Jews made use of every opportunity. They were an industrious and skillful people. In the Jewish Ghanaian states were found kings, princes, governors, generals, secretaries, treasurers, revenue agents, judges, architects, engineers, doctors, historians, language interpreters, mathematicians, jewelers, sculptors, masons, carpenters, painters of art, goldsmiths, letter workers, potters, armorers, saddlers, blacksmiths, agriculturists, etc. The Black Hebrew kings of Ghana had two titles. Let's get the next page. Those two titles were This was before we went into Egypt. This is the, all this is 70 AD and after. Egypt was BC time period. Okay, so we're a long time away from Egypt. Okay. And we only with about a century or so from us going on slave ships with this, this history, okay? Not a century, uh, a thousand years. A millennium. Right, a millennium, okay? My apologies, because I said 70 AD, Yeah. okay? And so slavery is going to uh, start kicking off in the 1300s, late 1300s, it's going to start kicking off, picking up, getting a little more momentum by late 1400s. By uh, 1500s, it's really uh, starting to pick up some steam. 1600s, it's on and popping. It's on and popping. Okay. 700s AD, you have the Arabs who are coming in and enslaving us. Okay, and forcing us, which is where we then get Moors. Moor is, 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 is birthed out of Arabs coming into the region and enslaving us. And so we take on uh, Arab uh, religion. 
because if we become, if we take on their, their, their ways, then we can, we can keep our life. So we buy into it. And then we start having children as we have bought into it. Hence, Moors. And the word more means black. Okay? Uh, so, Kaya, uh, Kayamaga, master of gold, and Ghana, war chief. Professor Godby says that 22 Hebrew kings reigned in Ghana before the Hegira in 622. 22 Hebrew kings, 22 Hebrew kings reigned in Ghana before the Hegira in 622 AD. And 44 had reigned by 790. 44 had reigned by 790. Davison makes mention of the Tariq el Fetach history of a researcher, which says that the Kumbi had been the capital of the vast country of the Kayamaga, while the Tariq es Sudan states that Kayamaga had been the name of the first king of this country. It is apparent that all the kings of Ghana were called by the title Kayamaga. And concerning Kumbi, the ancient capital of Ghana, it was located in the southern part of the present country of Mali during the Middle Ages, and the name Ghana was not used to designate the country. The name of this country was Ukar, and Ghana was just the title of its kings. Having uh, cognizance of this fact indicates the greatness and splendor of those kings, because after the decline of the Zah dynasty, men began to call this country after the title of its kings, which is Ghana. And I shall do the same. And here's the last part. In the 14th century, a Muslim writer named Abin Batuta wrote about uh, uh, this. Well, let me skip that part. Let me skip that part. Uh, okay, this is the part I want, the last part right here. Concerning the kingdom of Ghana, Joseph Williams, the Joseph Williams, writes what y'all can see it yes not yet okay joseph william writes whatever may be thought of the more or less mythological traditions connected with the earliest jews in north africa it is now practically an established fact that a jewish nation jewish at least in faith and perhaps two in origin mean biological DNA long held sway south of the Sahara. So our brother Dolph Windsor is saying you folks who went into slavery you are Jews and he's not the only scholar who is um, putting this kind of information together. And so we have the Bible that says, um, that points, you are Jews. Uh, that article says, go back to that article one final time. What was that part at? A uh, few black paper term. Is that it? Uh, okay. Well, read it right here. Few black people who favor the new term expect to see it replaced. It replaced black entirely. All they, although they would like it to be the principal reference eventually. For now, there does not seem 
to be the distaste toward black that many felt toward Negro or color two decades ago, two decades ago. Remember, this is 1989. So 79, 69, mm -hmm. two decades ago. <clears throat> Instead, there is a feeling that African-American can sometimes convey a significant, a significance that black cannot. Well, yeah, black is a color in a crayon box. Where is the land of black on any map? Any ancient map, where is the land of black? At least African-American, you could say, well, here's America. Here's the landmass America. Here's the landmass Africa. And these, these are the, the black people. So we know. So for 500 years, even from now, oh, okay, that's who these, that's who these people are. They're the ones that suffered all that hardship. They got their butts whipped. That's them people, right? But African-American doesn't justly uh, say who our father is. Israelite says who your father is, okay? Now, I wanna, I wanna uh, take a look at this book. Okay, which is titled Thoughts and Sentiments on the Evil of Slavery by uh, Kubina Otabar Kugawana. Okay, and let me show you what this brother looks like. Okay, <clears throat> and where is he at? There he is. Okay, so here's his brother right here. Um, here's his brother right here. Okay, so this brother, he's writing this book arguing against slavery. He's arguing against slavery. Hey, we got to get rid of slavery. This evil institution, it has to go, is what he's writing. Okay. And, okay. So, let's jump right into it. Paragraph one. Kwabna Ottawa Kuguana, the most radical African opponent of slavery in the 18th century, was born about 1757 on the coast of what is present day Ghana in the Fanta village of Aguimaku or Ajumaka, Ajumaku. In 1770, he was kidnapped by fellow Africans, so, now notice, by fellow Africans, fellow Africans, okay? Sold into slavery to Europeans and transported to the West Indies. At the end of 1772, he was taken to England where he was baptized as John Stewart in 1773. By 1784, he was employed as a servant by the fashionable painters, Richard and Marie Cosway, through whom he, be, he came to the notice of prominent politicians, artists, and writers, including William Blake. Okay. Um, now, I want to address this thought right here where it says, fellow Africans, kidnapped by fellow Africans. I want to address that. Okay. To Exodus chapter 11, verse 7. Boom. 
Exodus chapter 11, verse 7. But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue. Not a dog move his tongue. Read. Against man or beast, that ye may know how that the Lord doth put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. Between the Egyptians and Israel. I did not make a photo of this, and this is damaged anyway. Do you have your kind of in, Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary? Mine is damaged. I can, I can partially read it. Okay, and so I'm going to read an excerpt out of this book. The, uh, I, didn't, I didn't make a photo of it. Uh, Zonovan Compact Bible Dictionary. And I'm going to read from page, my man, he has it highlighted, from page 213. From page, I'm gonna read from page 213, and here is what it says. Can you read that? Are you able to read it? No, talking to me. Yes, sir. No, I won't read it. If it's moving, I definitely won't be able to read it. Okay. Can I have Ham, oh. the youngest son of Noah, born probably about 96 years before the flood and one of eight persons to live through the flood. He became the progenitor, meaning the father of, of the dark races, not the Negroes, but the Egyptians, Ethiopians, and Libyans, and Canaanites, okay? So this is what this, is what this group of, of scholars This is what this group of scholars are saying. I didn't write this book. This is what they're saying. Okay? Not the Negroes. That you may know there's a difference between Israel and the Egyptians. That's what we just read in Exodus chapter 11, verse 7. Go to Amos chapter 1, verse 6. Go to Amos chapter 1, verse 6. The book of Amos chapter 1, verse 6. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Thus said the Lord, for three transgressions of Gaza. For three transgressions of Gaza. For Gaza. I want, to, I want you to hold on to Gaza. We're going to come back to Gaza. Read. And for four... I will not turn away the punishment thereof, uh -huh. because they carried away captive the whole captivity to deliver them up to the up to Edom. So it says Gaza was going to uh, carry away captive the whole captivity to deliver them, meaning the children of Israel, to the Edomites. Now we understand that that uh, Edomites are the uh, well, in the classical baby book, it says that he's the forefather of the Romans. And everything uh, that I've come to learn, Romans are Caucasians. Everything that I've come to learn, uh, Romans are Caucasians. Therefore, Edomites are Caucasians. Read. Uh, seven. But I will send a fire on the wall of Gaza, which shall devour the palace thereon. Mm -hmm. And I will cut off the inhabitants from Ashdod. Okay. And him that holdeth the scepter from, uh, what's that? Ashkelon. Ashkelon. And I will turn my hand against Ekron. Okay. And the, and the remnant of the Philistines shall perish. And the remnant of the Philistines shall perish. Hmm. We got we got Gaza, we got Edom, we got Ashdod, Ashkelon, Ekron, 
uh, Philistines, look at these different nations. Read. Thus, well, saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of Tyrese, um, Ty yeah, Tyrus, uh -huh. and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because they delivered up the whole captivity to Edom, and remembrance, yeah, remembered and, not the brotherly covenant. And remember not the brotherly covenant. Read. 10, but I will send a fire on the wall of Tyrus. Okay, but I will send a fire on the wall of Tyrus. Read. Which shall devour the palace thereof. Okay, all right. So Gaza, well, who is Gaza? Because he said, I'm going to remember Gaza. Who is Gaza? Okay. I did capture this one. This is from uh, the Bible Dictionary, the Zonovan Compact Bible Dictionary, okay? For the entry, Gaza. Gaza, one of the five chief Philistine cities. So in just a moment, we got to find out Philistine. Philistine cities and the most southwesterly toward Egypt. It was an important stop on the caravan route. Originally a Canaanite city, Gaza was assigned by Joshua to Judah and was occupied later, okay? It was captured by the Philistines. All right, so we see this connection. Uh, we see where it's geographically located. I know I didn't show a map, but uh, uh, we see that, okay? So now Philistines. Philistines. Okay. And let's go here where it says biblical account. There we go. All right, is that large enough on the screen for you all to see? We need to be a little bit larger. There we go. Now we got it much large for you. Here we go. Can you read that? What it says? Uh huh. Biblical account in the book of Genesis, the Philistines are said to descend from the Kalish Heights. Uh, the Kaslu Heights, Kaslu Heights, or Kaslu Heights, Kaslu Heights. Kaslu Heights, an Egyptian people. However, according to rabbinic 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 source. The Philistines were different from those described in the Deuteronomistic history. history. Okay. Deuteronomistic his I mean Deuteronomistic source describes the five lost Philistines as based in five city states of the south southwestern Levant, mm -hmm. Gaza, Ascalon, Ashdod, Ekron, and Gath. From Wadi Gaza. Now the Levant is speaking about the Middle East. So when we think of that word Middle East, which includes Israel, so this is where uh, Africa, Israel, uh, and and uh, Iran kind of all join. Uh, that's that's that whole big large region, the Levant. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. from, uh, from Wadi Gaza in the south of the Yurkon River. In the north. Okay, so uh, go to because it says uh, Kasselite in the book of Genesis. Indeed, tells us this gives gives this account. Go to uh, Genesis chapter ten, verse thirteen and fourteen. We, we, we are identifying Philistines so that we can identify Gaza. 
book of Genesis, chapter 10 and verse 13. Hmm. And Mizraim. And Mizraim, Mizraim is the Hebrew uh, word uh, for Egypt. So you could very well say an Egypt. You could very well exchange Mizraim with the word Egypt. Go ahead, read. And Mizraim begat Ludum and 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 Naman mm -hmm. and Lahabin mm -hmm. and Naphtuhim. 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 Uh huh. And Pat, what's this? Patrius. Patrusim. Patrusim. Mm -hmm. And Galshim. And Kasuhim. Kasuhim. Which is what we just read on the Wikipedia page. Out of whom came Philistine, meaning the Philistines, meaning the Philistines. Okay, so who is Gaza? Because Gaza came out of the Philistines. So Philistines are Hermetic, coming from Egypt, coming from Mizraim. Gaza comes from Philistine. Hamnetic. Okay. But the scripture said in Amos, go back to Amos once again, one and six. Make sure we have not lost the thought. Brother Michael, you caused me to lose the thought. What are we talking about again? <laughs> Amos one and six. Thus saith the Lord. For three transgressions of Gaza, and for and for four, <clears throat> I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because they carried away captive the whole captivity to deliver them up to the Edom, up to Edom. I'm sorry. You see that? So this is not so much uh, Africans selling Africans. That's the point that I'm trying to make in, in, in with these scriptures, with, with uh, Exodus chapter 11, verse 7, with Amos chapter 1, verse 6, with trying to define Gaza and Philistine. I'm trying to show that the Bible stated that these folks would be selling the children of Israel into captivity. That's what I'm trying to illuminate. All right. Um... Okay, let's continue on with the book. Uh, right here. Okay. Um, now. In this third paragraph, and this Jeremy uh, Mead, Kubuana raises the most overt and extended challenge to slavery ever made by an English speaker person of African descent. He is also the first Anglophone African historian of slavery and the slave trade, and the first African to criticize European imperialism in the Americas. His recognition of John Marant and James Albert uh, Ukasa Gronosa as his predecessors helped establish a tradition of Afro-British writings by converts to Christianity. In Thoughts and Sentiments, Kubuano powerfully refutes the religious and secular arguments made by proponents of slavery. So he's coming against all the various arguments that say uh, why we are entitled to have you Negroes as slaves. He's coming against it to say, uh-uh, wait a minute. Through this book, he's coming against it. Wait a minute. And he's coming against it in the day. So this is not someone of 1990, someone of 2000, you know, trying to write the 1619 project. This is someone in the day coming against it. This is someone who lived it, got his freedom, and is coming against it. Okay? Um, 
He believes that slaves have not only the right, but the obligation to rebel against their owners, the servants of the devil. And this is the point I want it right here. Every Briton, he says, shares the blame for the evil of slavery. I'm gonna read that again. Every Briton, he says, shares the blame for the evil of slavery, which threatens Great Britain with divine retribution. Okay? Um, go to Revelation chapter 13, verse 10. You sound like you knew something about the scriptures. He makes references to scriptures. Hmm. Revelation is what? Again? Revelation chapter 13, verse 10. The book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 10. He, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. Mm. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. The Bible says, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. You took part in that thing 400 years ago? Mm. You got to deal with that. You took part in that? You got to deal with that. The brother said, every last Brit is guilty. Every last one is guilty. He ain't spared none. The wife is guilty. The daughter is guilty. The son is guilty. Every last one is guilty. Go to Exodus chapter 21, verse 16. Exodus chapter 21 and verse 16. And he that stilleth a man and stilleth him and selleth him. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. He and he that stilleth a man and selleth him, or if he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. He shall surely be put to death. That's the judgment. So when it comes time of the Lord, of the Father, when it comes time, this judgment shall be uh, administered, fulfilled. Okay? Um, hmm? uh, um, Revelation 13, 10, and Exodus chapter 21, verse 16. Okay? Let's go back to this book. Thoughts and sentiments. All right. And we'll go to page 15 here. All right. And uh, so now we did, right now, uh, the point of what we're about to look at is conversion to Christianity. So if you want to write that down, the, 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 the thought, the, the purpose of what we're about to look at, um, conversion to Christianity, conversion to Christianity. Okay. And let me find it. Oh, man, it's not going to help me. All right. Well, we'll get you to. Okay, let me find this word. Number of black men. Up oh, here we go. Here we go. Um... Let me start right here where it reads, number of black men and women who have made themselves so troublesome and dangerous to the families who brought them over as to get themselves discharged, they enter into societies and make it their business to corrupt and dissatisfy 
the mind of every fresh black servant that comes to England. First, by getting them Christian or married, which they inform them makes them free. Though it has been adjudged by our most able lawyers that neither of these circumstances alter the master's property in a slave. However, it is so far answers their purpose that it gets the mob on their side and makes it not only difficult, but dangerous to the uh, proprietor of the slaves to recover the possession of them when once they are spirited away. Thus, even before Somerset, colonial slaves considered England a sanctuary. But not surprisingly, after the Mansfield ruling, some slaves brought from the colonies to England still try to reinforce their claim, claims to freedom by baptism or marriage, seeking to take out extra insurance as it were. Having arrived in England in the wake of Mansfield's decision and perhaps having emancipated himself by leaving uh, Camp Campbell because of it, Cucuano was nevertheless advised by some good people to get myself baptized that I might not be carried away and sold again. Consequently, he was baptized, John Stewart, a black, aged 16 years, at St. James Church, Piccadilly, on 20th August, 1773. So in this time, in, in this time period, um, you could, you, if you become a Christian, then you could uh, become free from bondage, from being a slave. And so, and then again, how do we get more? So you heard me speak on that about 20 minutes ago. So that same thing was happening mm -hmm. at, um, during that time period, seven, um, 700s, what have you, 750s and what have you with the Arabs. And it was happening in the 1400s. It was happening in the 1200s that we slowly had some of our people converting to save their life. Mm -hmm. Self-preservation. Self-preservation. Now, go to 2 Maccabees, chapter 6. Second Maccabees, chapter 6 and verse 16. Uh, chapter 6, we on, uh, uh, verse 6 through 16. Verse, wait, 2nd Maccabees, chapter 6, verse 16? Uh, uh, verse 6 through 16. Gotcha. 2nd Maccabees, chapter 6 and verse 6 in the Apocrypha. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient fasts. Feast. Okay, it's got fast in it. And we start that over. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath, Sabbath days or ancient feasts, or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. So even in the time period of the Greeks and Romans, the same thing was happening. In the time period of the Greeks and the Romans, the same thing was happening. Because right now we're reading history before Christ came on the scene. Okay, read. Seven. And in the, and in the day of the king's birth, every month they were brought by bitter constraint to eat of the sacrifice. And when the fast of, what it says? Back, feast of Bacchus. Oh, got the fast. And when the feast of Bacchus was kept, the Jews were compelled to go in procession to Bacchus carrying height. So not only could they call themselves uh, uh, a Jew, I'm, I am of the tribe, I'm of the tribe of Judah, I'm of the tribe of Benjamin, I'm of the, I'm of the uh, tribe of Levi, 
not only could they, uh, they had to denounce that, you know, and, and forsake uh, revealing that as their identity, they also, in bondage and captivity, had to come carrying these tusks, these ivory tusks, you know, of elephants or whatever, filled with wine every month for the king's birthday. Read. Verse 8. Verse 8. Moreover, there went out a, a decree to, to the neighbor, to neighbor cities of the heathen, by the suggestion of Ptolemy, Ptolemy against the Jews, that they should observe to the same fashion and be partakers of their sacrifice. And whoso would not conform, I'm sorry, conform themselves to the manners of the Gentiles should be put to death. Look at that. If you won't conform to our way, our practices, our customs, our laws, then put your butt to death. Read. Then might a man have seen the present misery. For mm -hmm. well, there were two women brought and who had circumcised their children, whom when they had openly led round about the city, the, the babes hang, was hanging, hanging at their breasts. They cast them down along for the wall. So here they are, out in public, breastfeeding their children. And out in public, it was realized, you circumcised this boy. We told you. That's you all's custom, circumcision. That's not our custom. How dare you practice your custom and not keep our custom? So they killed the two women head first, which is headlong. They dropped these women to their death, cracking their heads because these two women said, our custom say to circumcise on the eighth day. So now they made examples out of these two women. So now what the other women doing? If they are circumcising their children, they they really they, they being extremely quiet about it. But what about the vast majority? Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a, a number on it. Let me let me retract that. But what about other women in our nation? Some of them fall and pray and say, well, because they're scared. So they're telling their husband, don't, 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 please don't, please don't, 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 don't uh, 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 circumcise them. Thank you for helping me with the word. Don't circumcise them. Don't circumcise them. Because also at the same time, what are the men doing in this same time period? You should, uh, you should know. They're going to the gym. Yeah, and I'm when you go to the that. gym, how do men go to the gym? Naked. Naked. Yeah. Naked. It ain't like today. When we read about the gym in this time period, they was going naked. So, go ahead. At the time, this was in, in Rome, right? Uh, Greek. Right? Greek. It's in Greek. Right. And they are the ones that created the gym, the gymnasium. Correct. Yeah, so that's what the word gym comes from gymnasium, which is naked exercise. Correct. Yeah. That's the origins of it. That's the, that's, the, that's the history of it. Okay? So you come into the gym, I'm his son. I come to the gym, right? Now, he's older, so he's, he's circumcised. Then, okay, they're going to let, let him slide because he came along in the time period where he was already born. But doggone me, I'm circumcised. I better make sure that my son is not circumcised. My five-year-old son, because if that's revealed, that could mean my life. Oh, okay. Correct. It cost me my life. Your son as well, or just his? Could be both. both. Could be both. Right. So this is this is the this is the time period of what's going. This is the historical. This is the record that we're reading. Read. 2 Maccabees chapter 6 and verse 11. And others that had run together in caves nearby to 
let me say it again, and others that had run together into caves nearby to keep the Sabbath day secret, being discovered by Philip. Being discovered to Philip. Being discovered to Philip were all burnt together hmm, because they made a conscious, conscious, yeah, consciousness, well, conscience to help themselves for the honor mm -hmm. of the most sacred day. So you keeping the Sabbath day? We found out that you had engaged to keep the Sabbath day. Kill them! Kill them all! How dare you? We don't do that. We don't keep this no Saturday. We keep Sunday. Kill them! Sun's day. That's what we do. Read. 12. Now I beseech those that read this book that they be not discouraged from these calamities. Don't be discouraged for these calamities. Don't let your heart fall and you give way to becoming uh, Christianized. You becoming uh, 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 is, is Islamicized. I, I, I probably just made up a word, but I think y'all know what I mean. <laughs> I got you. Read. But they, but, but that they judge those punishments not to be for destruction, but for a chastening of our nation. Of our nation. Go ahead. For it is a token of his great God goodness when wicked doors are not suffered any long time, but for with punishment. For not as with other nations whom the Lord patiently forbear to punish till they become oh, I'm sorry. till they become to the fullness of their sins. So deal with Dealt he with us. Okay. Lest that being uh, being come to the height of sin, afterwards he should take vengeance of us. Okay. And therefore he never withdrew withdraw his mercy from us. And thou and mm, and though he punish with adversity, yet doth he never forsake his people. Yet he never forsake his people. Go to 1 Maccabees chapter 1 verse 15. 1 Maccabees chapter 1 verse 15. The book of 1 Maccabees chapter 1 in verse 15. Mm -hmm. And made themselves uncircumcised and forsook the holy covenant and joined themselves to the heathen and were sold to do mischief. Look at that. Mischiefs. We made ourselves uncircumcised. We forsook the holy covenant. We joined ourselves to the heathen and we were sold to do mischief. So some of us was wicked as all get out. Some of us probably did sell our brothers into captivity. But that's not the bulk of us who did that. The vast majority of black folk, I mean, when I say black, I only mean your color, the color of, you yeah. know, of, of what you are. You was a, you was black, most likely you was hermetic. You right. was of another, you was not an Israelite selling a fellow Israelite into captivity. Correct me if I'm wrong, but this right here is saying to me, uh, Mac, first Maccabees 1 and 15, it sounds like uh, Jesse Jackson, <laughs> Hal Sharpton. Right. You know, right. Folks like that. Correct. Because when we read this, is this was uh, when you read this one in context, this was dealing with uh, the, the brothers among us who was seeking to get uh, the gymnasiums going. Okay, now go to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11. Verse 11. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, 
in verse 11. Wherefore, remember that ye being in times past Gentiles in the flesh. Gentiles in the flesh. Why were you Gentiles in the flesh? Because you allowed your sons to no longer be circumcised. This Paul is writing Ephesians. Paul is writing after the historical events that we read about in Maccabees. Paul is reading, at, I mean, Paul is writing, I'm sorry, Paul is writing after the historical events that we read about in Maccabees. Therefore, who is Paul speaking to? He is speaking to Israelites who have taken on the customs to uh, uh, knowingly and or unknowingly. Michael, what you mean? unknowingly well i might be again the son of the father and mother who for fear of their life and my life opted out of me being circumcised and i was brought up in a system where my parents were not teaching me and so then when i have children with my wife how are we going to raise those children without knowledge of the of the lord so here we are several generations later on and paul is saying hey remember in time past paul is speaking to israelites who are identified as gentiles okay read wherefore remember Remember that ye being in times past Gentiles in the flesh, whom are called uncircumcised by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. Made by hands. Read on. That at that time ye were without Christ. At that time ye were without Christ. At that time ye were out Christ. You no longer kept Sabbath days. You no longer kept our feast days. You no longer kept the covenant of our fathers. Read. That at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens of the commonwealth of Israel. Of the commonwealth of Israel. Commonwealth means we as a nation of people, the promises and everything is for this nation. You need help? Come to the church. We're going to take care of you. You want benefits? This, that, and a third? We're going to take care of you. The commonwealth. You go to Massachusetts, it's called the commonwealth of Massachusetts. Meaning the benefits of the citizens of the people of Massachusetts. Okay, read. And strangers from the covenant of promise, having no fun, <laughs> having no hope, and without God in the world. And without God in the world. Go to James chapter 1, verse 1. book of James chapter 1 and verse 1. James chapter 1 and verse 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes, all which scattered abroad, greedy. Who is this letter written to? To the 12 tribes. This letter is written to the 12 tribes. This letter is written to the 12 tribes. This letter is written to the 12 tribes scattered abroad. It's not written to this nation, that nation, this nation. It's written to the 12 tribes. So when you're reading the book of James, mm. when you read the book of James, you have to read it understanding that this is a letter written to a special, a certain people. Okay, so if I pick up a letter, it was written um, by 
my father to my mother and I read it and I'm, you know, sad or happy or whatever, my daddy didn't write that letter to me. He wrote it to my mama. Understand that. Go to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 1. Book of First Peter, chapter one, verse one. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers, to the strangers scattered throughout Patria, Pontus, 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 and Galatia, Galatia and Cappadocia, Asia, and Bethany. Peter's doing the same thing. Peter's doing the same thing. He's saying to the Strangers scattered abroad. Y'all went into captivity. To the strangers scattered abroad. So when you read Peter, you have to read it from the frame of mind. This is a letter that my daddy wrote to my mama. This is not a letter that my daddy wrote to me. This is a, a letter that my daddy wrote to my mama. You got to see it through that lens. Yeah, nothing worse is personalized to that particular person. Correct. Correct. This ain't a letter to everybody. This is a letter specific. It's not for the earth. Right? <laughs> it's not for everybody. Not for the earth. Right. Okay. All right. Let's go back to um, the book. I'm saying the book because I forget the title of it. I didn't write the title down. <laughs> I didn't write the title of the book down. Thoughts and Sentiments. I'm sorry. Thoughts and Sentiments. Okay. So, okay. Having arrived is where I wanted to pick up at. Having arrived. Where did it, where is that at? Um, John Black and the Hebrews and Muslims didn't want to preserve the condition of chattel slavery of unbelievers. Oh, let me finish reading that part. Let me, yeah. Um, the assumption, let me start right here. The assumption that conversion would or at least should guarantee freedom is understandable because traditionally societies that practice slavery enslaved outsiders. And one of the most common indicators of an outsider was religious difference. For example, ancient Hebrews and Muslims in Kujiano's own day reserved the condition of chattel slavery for unbelievers. As the rate of slave conversions grew, apologists were under increasing pressure to find another measure of difference. They were under increasing pressure to find measure of difference. Hence, your skin color became the difference. Ethnicity, color, and law became the principal means to alienate those who had become religiously assimilated and thus likely to claim to have become social insiders. So your color, okay? Now let me get to this other part that I wanted to get to. It starts off having arrived, having arrived. Uh, I'm supposed to be on this page. Uh, well, did I, I must have passed it up. Oh, okay, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep going forward. I'm gonna keep going forward because I can't find it. You want to say something? No, I was getting ready to miss what I was going to say for a while. But anyway, I'll say it because in that situation, yeah. You say, uh, oh no, I, I, I don't want to be a homosexual. Then they say, Chuck. you say, hey. Right, right. That's, that's the same thing. That's the same thing. You, you take on, you become a homosexual, then we'll let you in. 
What about you, man? Yeah, man, I ain't no, going to be no homosexual. <laughs> hey. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, they ain't well, killing you. you know, I was just, you know, using that because they were saying, if you're not a Christian, hey, Christianity, you won't believe in Christianity, not no. profess to keep the Sabbath, not profess to be a Jew, not to keep the customs of circumcision, yeah, so you won't you you won't uh you wanna be straight you 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 wanna you you a woman and you only like men, okay here's the gun. You a man and you only wanna uh deal down with women, okay here's the gun. So he said, uh, hey <laughs> Hey, <laughs> and so, so if 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 that's the case, because that's the hot button in our society, you know, uh, straight versus homosexuality, you know, that's the that's the hot button for for this day and age. So, in that day and age, that's what they were faced with. That's what I'm saying. I'm not necessarily using kill now, but other things they'll pass you up, and you won't be able to move up in the. But back then, they were. Put you to death. Right. But now it's something else if you don't conform to it. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, this is this is page nineteen of uh, thoughts and sentiment. Okay. Um, it says emancipation is so. This whole um, this next little bit that we're sharing out the thinking behind what I'm trying to share out is push to end slavery push to end slavery. This is the thinking that I want you all to be under as we read these next few words, okay? Push to end slavery, okay? okay. Emancipationists like Cujuano, who wanted to outlaw slavery and free all slaves immediately were relatively rare during the period. In the 18th century British context, abolition almost always refer to abolition of the trade in slaves from Africa to the remaining British colonies in the West Indies, not to the abolition of the institution of slavery itself. Though many of the slave trade abolitionists no doubt saw slavery as the ultimate target. In response to the growing public interest in the controversy over the African slave trade in February uh, 1788, George III ordered Privy Council Committee for Trade and Plantation to begin investigating the nature of the slave trade and British commercial uh, relations with Africa. The committee, as well as the House of Commons from 1789 to 1792 heard evidence for and against the trade. So they're hearing the arguments. Should we keep slavery? Should we let it go? Uh, from 1789 on, William Wilberforce led attempts in the House of Commons to pass an abolition bill, only to see it either fail by narrow margins or be blocked in the House of Lords in 1792. They didn't want this thing to go. They're making too much money from it. Mm -hmm. They're making too much money. So here they are arguing, uh, you know, where the decision makers are. You know, you're like here in America, you know, the, the Senate, House of Legislation, and so forth. They're arguing, should we let slavery go or should we not let it go? And each time the vote is passing, no, we do not let slavery go. So that's what was going on in, uh, in Britain is what he's telling us. Okay, so go to Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. Book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. 
Therefore shall thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord, hmm, which the Lord shall send against thee. Uh huh. The yeah. Lord shall send against thee. Why? Because as we continue reading this document, which the Lord shall send against thee, it every time it was it was uh, not passing. It was you know uh, falling and real close. And then, so here I am in this article. Um, right here, the outbreaks. So it, now it's looking like, okay, we might can do away with slavery. The outbreak of the French Revolution and the subsequent terror during the period from 1789 to 1794 made Britons reluctant to pursue any major social reforms lest they lead to revolutionary results and the slave revolts in the West Indies during the 1790s seemed to justify conservative fears. The threat posed by uh, Nepo uh, Napoleonic France to national survival then eclipsed all other issues until 1804. Wait a minute, we're dealing with Napoleon. Uh, we got we can't we can't deal with this. Nuh -uh -uh -uh. Freedom, free those niggas. No, 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 not right now. No, we keep these niggas. So back to the scripture, what's the connection that I'm trying to make? Read that again. Deuteronomy 28, 48. What's the connection I'm trying to make? In 48. Therefore shall thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall sin against thee. Which the Lord shall sin against thee. That's the point I'm trying to make. All this stuff that happened, the Lord caused these things to happen. The Lord brought this on the children of Israel. Read. In hunger and in thirst and in darkness in nakedness and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until and he have destroyed thee. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Go to Nehemiah chapter uh, 9, starting at verse 35. The book of Nehemiah chapter 9 in verse 35. For they have not served thee in their kingdom and in thy great goodness that thou gavest them and in the large and fat land which thou gavest before them. Neither turn they from their wicked works. So this is what the children of Israel, this is what they are guilty of. This is wherein the Lord said, let them go and serve other nations. Read. Behold, we are servants this day. And for the land that thou gavest us, thou gavest unto our fathers to eat the fruit thereof and the good thereof. Behold, we are servants in it. Mm -hmm. And it yieldeth much increase unto the kings whom thou hast set over us because of our sins. Also, also they have dominion over our bodies. Look at that. They have dominion over our bodies. Read. And over our cattle at their pleasure. And we are in great distress. And we're in great distress. Okay. Um, tell the way. Okay, we are uh, now go to Lamentations chapter five. Lamentations chapter five, verse two. Lamentations chapter 5 and verse 32. Verse 2. Verse, verse 2. two. Lamentations chapter 5 and verse 2. Our inheritance is turned to strangers, our house to aliens. Our house to aliens. This is what happened. To our inheritance is turned to strangers. 
our food, our land, everything. Go to um, Isaiah chapter 47, verse 6. Book of Isaiah chapter 47 and verse 6. I was wroth with my people. I polluted mine inheritance and given them into thy hand. Thou didst show them no mercy. Upon the ancient hast thou very heavily laid thy yoke. See that? So during the time period of uh Chattel, uh, transatlantic slavery, we had yokes upon our necks as the scriptures uh, indicated would happen to us. Okay, go to Matthew. Matthew chapter 11, verse 29. Matthew chapter 11, verse 29. Look at Matthew chapter 11, verse 29. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. So Christ is saying, take my yoke upon you. You got that, that yoke from slave period time and so forth? Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. This is the reason you got that yoke upon your neck, because you didn't learn of me. Now take my yoke and learn of me. Read. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart. I am meek and lowly in heart read and ye shall find rest unto your soul unto your souls repent and turn back to the father follow follow my examples follow my examples that you and your seed no longer go into captivity this is what christ is telling us okay mm -hmm. let's go back to uh, thought and sentiment. Thoughts and sentiment. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Now, read a little bit more of this. So it says I wanted to read to page 20. It says, the threat posed by uh, Napoleonic Polynetic France to national survival then eclipsed all other issues until 1804. When the agitation for abolition relatively uh, quiescent, quiescent uh, since 1796, revived with the renewal of war with Napoleon, who in 1802 had reintroduced slavery in the French Caribbean colonies. In 1807, the British slave trade was legally abolished and the British Navy actively tr uh, tried to stop the transatlantic slave trade of other nations. In 1838, non-indigenous slavery itself was abolished by law and colonial slaves in the British Empire were emancipated. So now what we're reading though is this, again, this introduction itself was not written by the author of the book, Quobna uh, uh, Odaba. Okay, so this is someone after the fact. This is someone in the 1900s who is now writing this introduction. Okay, so let's fast forward. I'm gonna go to page 50 of this document. Okay, so now we are actually in the writing of Kubna Odaba uh, Kuguano. Okay. And so I want to start with where it says, however. So I'm starting right here where it says, however. Okay. However, notwithstanding, all that has been done and written against, the, against it, that brutish. Uh, barbarity and unparalleled injustice is still carried on to a very great extent in the colonies and with an avidity as insidious, cruel, and oppressive as ever. 
The longer that men continue in the practice of evil and wickedness, they grow the more, the more abandoned. For nothing in history can equal the barbarity and cruelty of the tortures and murders committed under various pretenses in modern slavery. He said, when you look at history, there is nothing as horrific as what is taking place right now, right? Because we're in the 1700s. So right now then, right now then, 1700s. We are, right now we are reading from the, the perspective of this man, Cugiano, okay? He says, um, he says right here, and the various pretenses in modern slavery, except the annals of the Inquisition and the bloody edicts of popish massacres. So he said the only thing that beats this is uh, the, the annals of, of Inquisition and uh, the edicts of popish massacres. So now, I want to turn our attention to the Inquisition and these popish massacres, because he just told us we in seventeen we're in the seventeen hundreds right now. We are we in, we we don't have a, a 21st century way of thinking. We have an 18th century way of thinking because we are in the seventeen hundreds, looking at through the through the lens of this man. He says. Up to history now, nothing equals the the uh, horrifying uh, uh, goings of slavery, except what the Catholic Church has done. So, the Catholic Church. Are you able to uh, read what's on the screen? Is it large enough? You, are you able to? Uh, yeah. I just wanna make sure it's, it's large enough because yeah. I'm, I'm gonna be skipping around, okay? You able to able to read it on either screen? This, this screen hasn't been up to the screen again. What? <laughs> I said, I'm sorry. <laughs> She's trying to look to the look that way. Yeah. You look that way? I look. You can't look that way. You gotta look that way. There we are. Okay. So here we go. It says list of papal bulls. Now I encourage each of you to examine these bulls because these are the laws that were put in place that dictated how uh, the ruling class or the, the, the uh, trying ruling class, the Romans were gonna handle things, okay? So I encourage you to examine these decrees. This came from the church. And when I say the church, I don't mean uh, Jews as we understand it in children of Israel. I mean the Roman, I mean Christianity. I mean Catholicism. All right, moving on. So these, these uh, bulls go back to 1059, we can see, okay? Um, well, it may go back further than that because they do say this list is incomplete, okay? Um, but, so let's look at some of these. This stuff is interesting. <laughs> this is interesting, okay? Look at this first one right here. Yep, this first one. I want to take a look at it. 1233, um, listed at Capindos 
And, I, and forgive me if I'm uh, mispronunciating any of the words already in this lesson or any words moving forward. I may mispronunciate some of these words. But this one, 1233, marks the start of the Inquisition by the church. This was uh, Gregory the, the uh, Ninth. Gregory the Ninth. What's the Inquisition? So the Inquisition, in historical ecclesiastical terminology, also referred to as the Holy Inquisition, was a group of institutions within the Catholic Church whose aim was to combat heresy, conducting trials of suspected heretics, studies of records of fact. Okay, and so uh, Joan of Arc put to death. A lot of folks were put to death uh, uh, with the advent of the Inquisition. With the advent of the Inquisition, a lot of people being put to death. So then who is this going to target? It's going to target our ancestors. It's going to target our forefathers. Okay. The next one, Sophosir de Burat forbids Christians to dispute on matters of faith with Jews. Nope, don't even argue with them. To hell with them. What we, we don't care what they say. We're not going to give them a platform to debate. Our way is the way. We don't care nothing about them and their Talmud, them and their uh, uh, first five books, the Mosaic Law. We care nothing about them. Okay? The next one. Gotta love this one. Rachel Sun Vedens. Rachel Sun Vedens. What was it? Is a papal bull issued by Pope Gregory the Ninth on November 17th, 1234, calling for a crusade to the Holy Land. To whose land? To our land. And ordering Dominicans and Franciscans to preach in favor of it. Dominicans, uh, Franciscans, tell the congregants, especially the men, to feel emboldened to go to the Holy Land and to subdue it. Go to Jerusalem and subdue it. Subdue it. Put it under subjection. It's our land. Those black people there, no, it's our land, right? Calls for a crusade to the Holy Land and borders Dominicans and Franciscans to preach in favor of it. Okay, go to, we're coming right back to this. Go to Joel chapter three, verse two. chapter 3 and verse 2. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there my, for my people and for my heritage Israel. And for my heritage people, uh, uh, Israel, read. Whom they have scattered among the nations. These nations have scattered the children of Israel to the east, to the west, to the south, to the north, the children of Israel have been scattered. Read. And parted my way, my land. Ah, and parted my land, and parted my land. They chopped up my land and took claim of my land, Jerusalem. Okay? Go to Jeremiah chapter 12, verse 14. Jeremiah chapter 12, verse 14. Book of Jeremiah, chapter 12, and verse 14. Read. Thus saith the Lord against all my evil neighbors. Against all my evil neighbors, meaning those that surround Jerusalem. Read. That touch the inheritance which I have caused my people Israel 
to inherit. To inherit. You put your nasty hands on my land from my people. Read. Behold, I will pluck them out of their land and pluck out the house of Judah from among them. Mm, right. That's it. That's all I want. Okay. Go to Ezekiel chapter 35, verse 10. Ezekiel chapter 35, verse 10. What am I showing? I'm showing you in the scripture where it was already prophesied that these heathens were going to uh, uh, remove us and they were going to claim Jerusalem for themselves. And we see an edict by the Roman Catholic Church where, the, where uh, Pope Gregory, hold on, where Pope Gregory is saying, hey, Dominicans and friars, encourage the congregants that this is the this is what we want to want done. Read, call it and read it. Ezekiel thirty-five and ten. Because thou hast said these two nations. These two nations, meaning the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom, these two nations, the house of Ephraim. In the house of Judah, these two nations read, and these two nations and these two countries shall be mine. Israel and America, Israel, two countries, Israel and America. Why? Because Northern Kingdom is in America, and Southern Kingdom is in Jerusalem. Read. And we will possess it. Uh, 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 because thou hast said these two nations, these two countries, read. I'm going to start at the top. Yes, sir. Thank because you. thou hast said. Uh -uh, because that. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. These two nations and these two countries shall be mine. Uh-huh. And we will possess it. Whereas the Lord was there. Whereas the Lord was there. <clears throat> whereas the Lord was there. Nope. We're going to take it over. And who is he speaking about at verse 10? If you jump all the way up, you see he's talking about uh, uh, Mount Seir. Talking about Edom. Edom. This is the attitude of Edom at verse 10. Where do we see that? Um, especially, especially verse 2. Yeah, verse 3. Thank you. Okay. Go to Joel. Chapter 3, verse 6. Joel, chapter 3, verse 6. Okay, the book of Joel, chapter 3, and verse 6. Mm -hmm. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians. Have ye sold unto the Grecians. Who sold these? Who sold us to the Grecians? We look up at verse 4, we see who sold. Go to verse 4. Verse 4. Ye, and what have ye to do with me? I'm sorry, yea, and what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon? Two African nations. Read. And all the coast of Palestine. The Arabs. We talked about the 700s, the, the uh, slave of, of uh, the Saharan uh, slave trade. Read. Will ye render me a recompense? And if ye recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own head? Jump back down to verse 6. 6. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians. Uh -huh. That ye might remove them far from their border. That ye might remove them far. From their border. Why? So that you can claim it for yourself. So that you can claim it for yourself. So let's go back to these bulls. By the Roman church. See it's so interesting when we. Uh, see the Bible. And then we start seeing. Actual history. Um, unfolding. That fulfills. Biblical prophecy. The Bible begins to really really take shape and come alive and we like wow at least for me at least for me so again uh this one here 
on the screen, uh, 1234, November 17th. That's when this bull went forth. Rachel Soon Vedens. Go ahead. Bulls are uh, the creeds or letters or something? Yeah, speak loud though. Yeah, bulls are letters or the creeds or sanctions or whatever? Right. Okay, right, right. right. Okay. So calls for a crusade to the Holy Land. Notice the, the first word in, the, in this bull. Rachel. What's our foremother's name? Rachel. Rachel. Showing you what land they talking about. <laughs> this is okay. Um, then this next one, twelve thirty-five, by the same pope, cum ora undecima, since the eleventh hour, first bull authorizing friars to preach to pagan nations. Why is this? When you start reading all this stuff, okay, go preach. To, remember, we got the Inquisition. So go preach to these uh, pagan nations. So as I preach to these pagan nations, I can influence them, especially pagan Jews. I can, I can get them to let go of their religion, meaning their laws. Because for us, religion means laws. For us, religion means laws. We can, let, we can get them to uh, let go of these laws. Because if we can get them to let go of their laws, then we can get them to adopt our customs. And if we can get them to adopt our customs, shoot, we can stop fighting. We can be at peace. That's where the fighting is coming from. When you go back and you study, the fighting is coming from Israel and Esau. When you really, really, really do an analytical look of global conflict, it centers around uh, Jacob and Esau, Israel and Caucasians. Centers around them because Jacob has laws that differs than everybody else on the planet. And Esau says, I want my laws to dominate. That's the battle. That's the battle. The <coughs> Say that again. The Hatfield and McCoy. <laughs> Hatfield and McCoy. I know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? The next one that, that I want to share out. Uh, this one right here. Where's my curse? There we go. Sivira Sunt, if they are true, orders the seizure and examination of Jewish writings. You see them with books and letters, you take it, you seize it and examine it, especially the Talmud, meaning the first five books of the Bible, <clears throat> uh, suspected of blasphemies against the uh, Christ and the church. You see him with those writings? You seize it? Oh, we got we got to put them to death. Twelve thirty nine. Okay. Um, this one here, like this this one. Impia Jens ordering Talmud to be burned. This one here. Oh, this one's a lovely one. Uh, where is it at? Where is it at? I thought I was, oh, bear with me. Here it is, here it is, here it is, here it is. 1252, May 15th. Ad extirpanda for the elimination. This is Pope Innocent IV. Authorizes the use of torture for eliciting confessions from heretics during the Inquisition and executing relapsed heretics by burning them alive. And again, there's books called the Inquisitions. And so you can go to those books and read uh, greater detail to understand what this stuff is talking about. Why am I saying that? I'm saying that because I want to make the claim that who does this predominantly target? <clears throat> it predominantly targets us. So in making that claim, I'm encouraging you, 
go find the books called Inquisition so you can read it and not just hear me making claims, but you can read it and learn about it and say, oh man, the brother wasn't just making claims, he hitting on something. Okay. Um, now, huh? Then it goes on. This one right here. Um, look at this one. Letters on Jews, 1272, against blood libel. Now I pulled that one up because I wanted to read it. I wanted to I wanted y'all to see this one. Okay. <clears throat> Canon law was hostile to Jews in wording. But the popes also refused to accept popular violence against Jews. The following letter of Pope Gregory X, 1271 and 1276, incorporates material from earlier letters of Innocent III and Innocent IV. Here, Gregory X uh, uh, opposes the blood libel. The author repeated claim that Jews killed and ate Christian children. Hear the lie they were saying about us? that we killed and ate Christian children. Pope Gregory's letter did not stop repeated accusations. So he's, he's not in the letter, he's not denouncing that. He allowed that lie to continue. Gregory, Bishop Servant of the Saints, Servants of God, extended uh, greetings and the apostolic benediction to the beloved sons in Christ and faithful Christians, to those here now and those in the future, even as it is now it is not allowed to the Jews in the assemblies presumptuously to undertake for themselves more than that which is permitted by the law. Even so, they ought not to suffer any disadvantage in those privileges. So they say, hey, don't kill them. Don't kill them. So they kind of backtracking on the torture aspect. But it's not going to last long. So I just wanted y'all to see that. I'm almost done with these examples. Got just a couple more examples that I want to want to show. This next example, and notice the timeline showing you that it never ended. Okay, this next one is called Creator Omnium. Creator Omnium. Uh, come on, where is that one at? Where is that one? Did I write the date on it? Didn't write the date. Where is that one? Okay, I'm gonna let that one go because I, apparently I can't find it. Uh, but Creator Omnium and uh, Sikut Dundum. So uh, look those two up. Uh, but this one, this next one, I do not wanna let this one go. Uh, I do not wanna let this next one go. Is it? I'm gonna find you. I can't let you go. Here it is. Nope, not that one. Doom, doom. Ad. No, ah. Here we go. So, now here we are. 1442, August 8th. Complete separation of Jews and Christians. Send them to the ghettos. Send them to the ghetto. Send them to the ghetto. Okay? Now, Brother Michael, why are you showing me this stuff? The ghetto where the Jews reside. <laughs> so here it is. Um, in this website, this is the website, those that want to look it up, doctrineofdiscovery.org, uh, Doom the Versus. Huh. So what does it say? Papal Bull Doom the Versus, June 18th, 1452. Pope Nicholas V issued the Papal Bull Doom the Versus on uh, June 8, 18th, 1452. It authorized Alfonso V of Portugal to reduce any Saracens, Muslims, and pagans, and any other unbelievers 
to perpetual slavery. This facilitated the port. Remember now, who also is practicing Islam? Negroes. Because what had transpired uh, a few centuries prior, we said, okay, we'll, we'll practice Islam. You're going to let us live. Right. You're going to give us some freedom. Hence, Moors. Okay. This facilitated the Portuguese slave trade from West Africa. The same Pope wrote the bull Romanus Pontifus on January 5th, 1455 to the same Alfonso as a follow-up to the Doom de Versus. It extended to the Catholic nations of Europe dominion over discovered lands during the Age of Discovery, along with sanctifying the seizure of non-Christian lands. It encouraged the enslavement of native, meaning Africans, meaning Africans, meaning Africans, non-Christian peoples in Africa and the new world. The new world is America. The new world is America. This right here was the uh, edict from the Roman church that said, target the niggas. Target the niggas. Or can I say that word? Target the Negroes. <laughs> I don't know if I can say it on the, on the recording. <laughs> okay. So, uh, and this is the edict. Okay. This is the edict. And then he went back and said, uh, he said, uh, with this, this one here. Romanus Pontifus. And then later it was renewed by another Pope. And that one was called uh, Preclis de Notionis. And that was renewed in 1514. It was renewed. Okay. All right. Let's go back to the article now. Back to the book, Thoughts and Sentiments. Page 52. So uh, before I go to page 52, my man said, um, he said right here that this, this uh, form of slavery, you're not going to find this form of slavery in your history books. The only place, the only other thing that equates to this brutality is right here. He says, the annals of the Inquisition and the bloody edicts of Popish massacres, which we just read a handful of examples. When you read your history books, you're not gonna find slavery of this magnitude uh, being recorded. That's what this guy in the 1700s that's what he is writing. Yeah, critical race theory won't. I don't know what it will make it into the class. <laughs> it won't. <laughs> okay. Um, did I want to read any more of that? Okay. Uh, all right. So now, let me go to page 52. page 52 of this document and we want to start where he says I was here we go right here now I'm gonna read quite a bit of this I'm gonna read a few pages of this this is his story this is the man's story his testimony what happened to him I was born in the city of Agamacu on the coast of Fantine. My father was a complexion to, to the chief in that part of the country of Fanti. And when the old king died, I was left in his house with his family. Soon after, I was sent for by his nephew, Ambro Akasa, who succeeded the old king in the chiefdom 
of that part of Ponte known by the name of Aguimacu and Asini. I lived with his children, enjoying peace and tranquility about 20 moons, 20 months, which according to their way of reckoning time is two years. I was sent for two visits. Uh, I was sent for to visit an uncle who lived at a considerable distance from Agui uh, Maku. The first day after we set out, we arrived at Asini, and the third day at my uncle's habitation, where I lived about three months, and was then thinking of returning to my father, a young companion at Agui Maku. But at this time, I had got well acquainted with some of the children of my uncle's hundreds of relations. And we were some days too uh, venturesome in going into the woods to gather fruit and catch birds and such amusements as pleased us. One day, I refused to go with the rest being rather apprehensive that something might happen to us till one of my playfellows said to me, because you belong to the great men, you are afraid to venture your carcass or else of the bosom, uh, which is the devil. This enraged me so much that I set a resolution to join the rest. And we went into the woods as usual, but we had not been above two hours before our troubles began when several great ruffians came upon us suddenly and said we had committed a fault against their Lord and we must go and answer for it ourselves before him. Some of us attempted in vain to run away, but pistols and cutlasses were soon introduced, threatening that if we offered to stir, we should all lie dead on the spot. One of them pretended to be more friendly than the rest and said that he would speak to their Lord to get us clear and desired that we should follow him. We were then immediately divided into different parties and drove after him. We were soon led out of the way, which we knew, and towards the evening as we came in sight of a town, they told us that this great man of theirs lived there, but pretended it was too late to go and see him that night. Next morning, there came three other men whose language differed from ours and spoke to some of those who watched us all the night. But he that pretended to be our friend with the great man and some others were going away. We asked our keepers what these men had been saying to them and they answered that they had been asking them and us to gather and to go and feast with them that day, and that we must put off seeing the great man till after, little thinking that our doom was so nigh, or that these villains meant to feast on us as their prey. We went with them again about half a day's journey and came to a great multitude of people having different music playing, and all the day after we got there, we were very merry with the music, dancing and singing. Towards the evening, we were again persuaded that we could not get back to where the great man lived till next day. And when bedtime came, we were separated into different houses with different people. When the next morning came, I asked for the men that brought me there and for the rest of my com uh, companions. And I was told that they were gone to the seaside to bring home some rum, guns, and powder. And that some of my companions were gone with them. And that some were gone to the fields to do something or other. This gave me strong suspicion that there was something treachery in the case. And I began to think that my hopes of returning home again were all over. I soon became very uneasy not knowing what to do and refuse to eat or drink for whole days together. So the man of the house told me that he would do all in his power to get me back to my uncle. And I ate a little fruit with him and had some thoughts that I should be sought after. 
as I would be than missing at home about five or six days. I inquired every day if the men had come back and for the rest of my companions, but could get no answer of any satisfaction. I was kept about six days at this man's house. And in the evening, there was another man came and talked with him a good while. And I heard the one say to the other, he must go. And the other said, the sooner the better. That man came out and told me that he knew my relations at Aguimacu and that we must set out tomorrow morning and he would convey me there. Accordingly, we set out next day and traveling till dark, when we came to the place where we had some supper and slept, he carried a large bag with some gold dust, which he said he had to buy some goods and the seaside to take with him to Aguimacu. Next day we traveled on and in the evening came to the town where I saw several white people which made me afraid that they would eat me according to our notion as children in the inland parts of the country. This made me rest very uneasy all the night. And next morning, I had some victuals food brought, desiring me to eat and make haste as my guide and kidnapper told me that he had to go to the castle with some company that were going there as he had told me before to get some goods. After I was ordered out, the horrors I soon saw and felt cannot be well described. I saw many of my miserable countrymen chained two and two, some handcuffed and with their hands tied behind. We were conducted along by the guard. And when we arrived at the castle, I asked my, my guy what I was brought there for. He told me to learn the ways of the Brosso, that is the white-faced people. I saw him take a gun, a piece of cloth and some lead for me. And then he told me that he must now leave me there and went off. This made me cry bitterly but I soon conducted, but I was soon conducted to a prison for three days where I heard the groans and cries of many and saw some of my fellow captives. But when a vessel arrived to conduct us away to, to the ship, it was a most horrible scene. There was nothing to be heard but rattling of chains, smacking of whips and the groans and cries of our fellow men. Some would not stir from the steer, uh, uh, steer from the ground when they were lashed and beat in the most horrible manner. I forgot the names of this infernal fort, but we were taken in the ship that came for us to another that was all, that was ready to sail from Cape Coast. So that's this man's story that he experienced. I'm going to stop it right there. I want to go to, what was that? That was page 55. I want to go to Psalms 137. <clears throat> verses 1 through 4. Psalms 137, verses 1 through 4. The book of Psalms, chapter 137. In verse one, by the rivers of Babylon. By the rivers of Babylon. It's Babylon, we read in Revelation and throughout the Bible, is the new world, America, Caucasians, Edomites. Historically, Babylon is Africans. Okay, actually, no, 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 uh, no. Let me stand corrected. I apologize. No, Babylon was... Uh, was that whole area of um, Iran and so forth. Okay, continue on. There we sat down, yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We, <clears throat> we hanged our hearts upon the willows in the midst thereof. We hanged our hearts 
the thing to make joyous music, happy music, romantic music. We hang our heart. Ain't no joy. Ain't no romance. Ain't no joy. Read. For there, for there they that carried us away captive required us. For there, by the rivers of Babylon, they that carried us away captive required of us a song. Sing, nigga, sing. I'm sorry, I probably can't use that word. Sing, Negro, sing. Read. And, and they that wasted us required of us mirth. Happiness. Come on, be happy. Come on, Docky, be happy. Read. Sing, sing us one of those songs, I am. See there? Read. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange, yeah, strange land? But there's the question. But how can we sing a song in a strange land? How can I sing a joyous song and I'm seeing my fellow countrymen in shackles two by two? Or behind their backs, being carried away on these boats and have been in these dungeons for three months at a time and so forth, going blind with feces and vomit and menstrual up to the shin. How can I sing such songs? I can't sing such songs. Who did this happen to? We read in Deuteronomy 28, 68, we read the whole chapter of Deuteronomy 28. Who did this happen to? The title of tonight's class, we said, is Who Are We? Don't call me black no more. No more. I like more. <laughs> Don't call me black no more. Who are we? So we make the claim we are the true biological descendants of Jacob, of Judah. We make that claim. And we look at the text to feel confident in making such a claim. Okay? Let's continue on with our, our brother, um, Kuano. Uh, Kua okay? Now I want to go to, all right, that was page 55. All right. I want to start with, from that time, I was kidnapped. Where is that at? This is page 55. And from that time, I was kidnapped. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, send that to me. I'll, and I'll, I'll Uh, sent to the email. Um, I pulled it up. What um, what's the title of it? What's the name of it? This is just to back up what we said about Babylon. Present day Iraq, right? Present day Iraq. It's called uh, Ancient Babylon today, is what it's called. <clears throat> this is it right here, I believe, is what you were showing me. Okay. Mm -hmm. that it? No, that's it? Mm -hmm. But it still makes the same point, I believe. Yeah. Makes the same point. This is just to back it up. All praises. Okay. So it says, the town of Babylon was located along the Euphrates River in present-day Iraq, about 50 miles south of Baghdad. It was uh, founded around 2300 BC by the ancient Akkadian-speaking people of uh, southern Mesopotamia. Now, whether or not these people were, uh, I'd have to do a little bit further, but I'm, I'm an uh, Amorite king. So I know Amorite is hermetic. Mm -hmm. So that being said, I guess it's safe to say that Babylonians 
uh, especially at this time under this king, were uh, Hermetic Africans. All right, carrying on. And again, uh, from that time I was kidnapped. Where is that at? From that time I was kidnapped. That's what I'm looking for. If y'all see it as I'm scrolling, please help me find it. If y'all see what I'm looking for from that time I was kidnapped. There we go. Found it. I got it. This is where I want to start. Right here. Right here. From that time I was kidnapped. I'm going to read. Okay. From the time that I was kidnapped and conducted to a factory, and from thence in the brutish base, but fashionable way of, a, of traffic, consigned to Granada. Now, Granada was the last stronghold uh, that was defeated in 1492. It was the last stronghold that was defeated. Whereas, uh, after that, we see Christopher Columbus um, beginning his voyages and, and, and taking slaves and so forth, okay? Uh, all right. The, the grievous thoughts which I then felt still paint in, uh, in my heart, pant in my heart. Though my fears and tears have long since subsided, and yet, it is still grievous to think that thousands more have suffered in similar and greater distress under the hands of bar uh, barbarous robbers and merciless taskmasters, and that many of many even now are suffering in all the extreme bitterness of grief and woe that no language can describe. The cries of some and the sight of their misery may be seen and heard afar, but the deep sounding groans of thousands and the great sadness of their misery and woe under the heavy load of oppressions and calamities inflicted upon them are such as can only be distinctly known to the ears of Jehovah Sabaoth. Okay? And so this is what this man is describing to us. So how can, that's why I wanted to, uh, I wanted to read all of that that we just read before actually I messed up my notes. Uh, it, it was my intentions to read to, to here, to this finishing point, and then go to Psalms 137 verses one through four that we just read. That was my intention. I got it out of order, forgive me. <laughs> But we still get the gist, the, the gist, and we can use our imagination and so forth to understand what this man was dealing with. He's living in the time period of the, of the happening. So this is a firsthand account. What we're reading is a firsthand account. You don't get historical record any better than, his, than firsthand account. The only better that you get than this is you yourself going through it. You get no better account than something like this. Okay. Uh, page 150, uh, page 56, but I must own. I want to start there, but I must own. But if you see it, please help me. But I must own. But I must own. If you see it, please help me. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Right here. Okay. But I must own to the shame of my own countrymen that I was first kidnapped and betrayed by some of my own complexion who were the first cause of my exile and slavery. Go to book of Acts. Chapter 21, starting at verse 37. 
book of Acts, chapter 21 and verse 37. And as Paul was to be led into the castle, he said unto the chief captain, May I speak unto thee? Who said, Canst thou speak Greek? Art not that, art not thou that Egyptian, which before these days may manage an uproar and lead us out into the wilderness for thousands, I'm sorry, for thousand men that were murdered. But Paul said, I am a man which am a Jew of, what is that, Tarsus, Tarsus. a city in Sicilia, uh -huh. a citizen of no mean city. And I beseech thee, suffer me to speak unto the people. Paul was yeah. accused, was thought, was assumed to be an Egyptian because of Paul's dark skin. So here, uh, Cugiano, I hope I'm saying this man's name right. I need to get this man's name correct. I need to get his name correct. Um, Guabno Odaba, well, and I, I still don't have his last name. Ah. I'm sorry, you all. Um, he says, look what he says. My own complexion. I was betrayed by some of my own complexion. Paul was accused of being an Egyptian when, in fact, Paul is an Israelite. Negroes and Africans look alike. <clears throat> we look alike. We have we share the same. We share similar comp complexions, from light skin to dark skin. We share a similar complexion, so it's easy to assume you're my same person. You caused me to go into captivity. Okay, let's continue reading. Forty. No, I'm right here, right here. I'm, I'm done with that. I'm, I'm back. To, I'm back to the book. Thoughts and sentiments. But if there were no buyers, there would be no sellers. So far as I can remember, some of the Africans in my country keep slaves, which they take in war or for debt. But those which they keep are well fed and good care taken of them and treated well. And as to their clothing, they differ according to the custom of the country. So in other words, what this man is saying, what he saw with his own eyes, that if I had a slave, that slave dressed as nice as I dress. That slave ate as well as I ate. That slave was taken care of as well as I could take care of him or her. He's saying, this is something different. This right here, what I experienced with this white man, this is something different. Okay. Let me continue reading through 57. This is what I told myself. Um, where am I at? Oh, right here. But I may safely say that all the poverty and misery that any of the inhabitants of Africa meet with among themselves is far inferior to those in hospitable regions of misery, which they meet with in the West Indies, where their hard uh, hearted overseers have neither regard to the laws of God nor the life of their fellow men. He says, this, this is different. This right here is different. That's what he's telling us. Okay. Um, okay. I'm going to go to page 62 now. Yep, 62. Okay. And I'm looking for some pretend that Africans. Some pretend that Africans. Some pretend that Africans. You see it? Please help me find it. Some pretend 
that the Africans. I want to start with that verbiage. Here we go. Down at the bottom. Okay. Some pretend that the Africans in general are a set of poor, ignorant, dispersed, unsociable people, and that they think it no crime to sell one another and even their own wives and children. Therefore, they bring them away to a situation where many of them may arrive to a better state than ever they could obtain in their own native country. That's the, that is the propaganda. Again, we're not, we're, we're not, look, we're not in 2022. We're in the time period. We're in, because this, this, we're reading the firsthand account. So we are in the time period. So what he's telling us is that this is the propaganda that's pushed. That's why he started the sentence off with some pretend that the Africans, they pretend that the Africans, okay? Where did I want to end on that one? Uh, I want to keep reading. This uh, specious pretense is without any shadow of justice and truth. And if the argument was even true, it could afford no just and warrantable matter for any society of men to hold slaves. But the argument is false. But the argument is false. There can be no ignorance, dispersion, or unsociableness so found among them, which can be made better by bringing them away to a state of a degree equal to that of a cow or a horse. Mm. This is what he says. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, go to Surat chapter 33, verse 31. Surat Ecclesiasticus, chapter 33, verse 31. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 33 and verse 31. Start, you know what? Um, start at verse 30. In the Apocrypha, Ecclesiasticus 33 and 30, on the book of Sirach. <clears throat> if thou have a servant... Let him be unto thee as thyself. Say it again. Let him be unto thee as thyself. Say it again. Let him be unto thee as thyself. That's what our law says. If you have a servant, let him be unto you as thyself. Read on. Because thou hast brought him with a price. Thou hast bought him with a price. Read. If thou have a servant, entreat him as a brother. Read it again. If thou have a servant, entreat him as a brother. Read it one more time. If thou have a servant, entreat him as a brother. Read on. For thou hast need of him as of thine own soul. If thou entreat him evil, and he run from thee, which way wilt thou go to seek him? Which way, where, where, where did he go? Which way did he go, George? Which way did he go? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I'm my age. I'm sorry. <laughs> Which way did you go, George? Which way did you go? <laughs> go to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 1. Isaiah chapter 14, <clears throat> verse 1. For the Lord would have mercy on Jacob mm -hmm. and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. Okay. And the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. So will other nations be in the kingdom? Because this is future. Yes, other nations will be in the kingdom. Yes, they will. Read. Two. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them. And we'll show what? The house of Israel shall possess them. Possess. Own. Mm -hmm. I own you. Read. In the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. Okay. 
to take, uh, and they shall take them captive. They shall take them captives. Who, whose captives they were. Whose captives they were. We read earlier tonight, Revelation chapter 13. Read. And they shall rule over their oppressors. And they shall rule over their oppressors. Go to Leviticus chapter 25, verse 44. The book of Leviticus chapter 25 and verse 44. Mm -hmm. Both thy bondmen and thy bondmaids, which thou shalt have, shall be of the heathen that are around about you. Uh. Of them shall ye buy bondmen and bondmaids. Okay, so this law is not, this law is not, uh, not uh, done away with. Meaning, law of animal sacrifice is done away with. Mm -hmm. it's, substitu it's substituted in Christ. Uh, the priestly duties is substituted in Christ. This law, because we're not in our land, mm -hmm. the pause button is pushed. The pause button is pushed, but it's not done away with. If you can understand what I mean. Yeah, I got you. Mm -hmm. The pause button on animal sacrifice, no, there is no pause button. The play button is still on with animal sacrifice, yeah. but it's been changed. It was, there was, they took the tape, then they, they edited the tape and, and put in uh, Christ. So you, we was listening to the tape, we was watching the movie, we was listening to the audio, whatever, whatever analogy, I'm just trying to create an analogy, something that we can all connect with, right? We're listening to it, and we hear animal sacrifice, animal sacrifice. And they say, oh, stop the tape, cut that, cut that part out. And we're not going to do away with it, but we're going to substitute it with Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, the Lamb of God. So it's still in play. But this one, oh, press the pause button. But you're not in your land yet. You're a captive yourself. So how can you take someone to be captive and you, you are in captivity? So the pause button is pushed on this one. Then you get back in your land, let the pause button go. And now this one comes, comes to again. Does that, does, that, does that analogy make sense? I'm gonna keep on rolling. <laughs> right, that's, 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 that's the point, correct. Okay, now, um, okay, let's get back to this book. We're almost done, y'all. I think I can make it. <laughs> We're almost done. And I want to go to page 65. And I want to start where it says, and now as to the Africans. And now, as to the Africans. You might see it before us because it's a delay. Okay, okay, okay. Here we go. There it is. There it is. Now we see it. Okay. So we're going to read this and we're going to go into the next page. And now, as to the Africans being dispersed and unsociable, if it was so that could be no warrant for the Europeans to enslave them. And even though they may have many different feuds and bad practices among them, the continent of Africa is a vast extent and the numerous inhabitants are divided into several kingdoms and principalities which are governed by their respective kings and princes. And those are absolutely maintained by their free subjects. Very few nations make slaves of any of those under their government, but 
such as are taken prisoners of war from their neighbors are generally kept in that state until they can exchange and dispose of them otherwise. And towards the West Coast, they are generally procured, purchased, bought for the European market and sold. They have a great aversion to murder. So these Africans, they don't advocate murder or even in taking away the lives of those which they judge guilty of crimes. And therefore, they prefer disposing of them otherwise better than killing them. Send them, send them to the king over there. Send them over there. Get rid of them. Like uh, Joseph. Mm -hmm. Potiphar disposed of him. He was sent to the prison house. He wasn't killed. He was sent to the prison house. Okay. This gives their merchants and procurers of slaves a power to travel a great way into the interior parts of the country to buy such as are wanted to be disposed of. These slave procurers are the these, these slave procurers are a, are a set of a great villains as any in the world. Okay, I think that's as far as I wanted to go. Is it? Yes, yes, yes. I, I wanted to come up to this part right here, killing. All right. Um, no, I do want to keep reading. Slave procurers in Africa are much alike. All right. Um, this gives their merchants and procurers of slaves a power to travel a great way into the interior parts of the country to buy such as are wanted to be disposed of. These slave procurers are a set of as great villains as any in the world. They often steal and kidnap many more than they buy at first. Go to Revelation chapter 18. And verse 13. Book of Revelations, chapter 18. Uh, start at verse 11. Revelations 18 and 11. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her. For no man buyeth their merchandise anymore. Who are we talking about? The merchants. And what do they buy? Read. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stone and of pearl and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and fine wood. All thine wood, sweet wood. All thine wood. Sweet wood, go ahead. And all minor vessels of victory. And, oh yeah, I'm sorry. And all minor vessels of ivory and all minor vessels of most precious wood and of brass and iron and marble and cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beets and sheep and horses and carrots yeah and carrots chariots oh i'm sorry and chariots <laughs> <That's all right. laughs> i'm hungry too and chariots and slaves and and souls of men. What do they buy? Slaves souls and souls of men. Slaves and yes. souls of men. Yes. Slaves and souls of men. They own every aspect of you. They own every aspect of you. Even your carrots. Okay. <laughs> Even the carrots. That's supposed to be chariots. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, Now, um, let's continue reading. Here we go. We're almost done, y'all. Five minutes and I'm done. These kidnappers and slave procurers called merchants are a species of African villains which are, which are greatly corrupted 
and even vitiated by their intercourse with the Europeans. But wicked and barbarous as they certainly are, I can hardly think if they knew what horrible barbarity they were sending their fellow creatures to, that they would do it. But the artful Europeans have so deceived them that they are bought by their inventions of merchandise and beguiled into it by their artifice for the Europeans at their factories in some various manner have always kept some of the ser uh, servants to them and with gaudy cloths, clothes in a gay manner as decoy ducks to deceive others and to tell them that they want many more to go over the seas. So you all see what, what they're doing. So the Caucasian, the Caucasian man, he keeps some of the slaves. He causes the slave to dress nice. And so when the slave catches, the, 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 after the men of color, the men that have the same complexion as the, the uh, Quibano, when they come to talk about um, come to talk about you know the, the 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 negotiations of slave trading, they say, okay, oh yeah, okay, you got you got some 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 folks here. You know, they see black black folks. They see how they're dressed nice and so on and so forth. So in their mind, okay, everything is good. All is well. So yeah, how many you want? 10, 20, 100? Yeah, we, we, we'll get you that. We'll get you. Because slavery to the African is not slavery according to the European. So the European is deceiving the black slave catcher. So the black slave catcher goes, I got 10, I got 50, got 100. That's what he's telling us. You, know, you see what I'm saying? You see what he's saying? Let me read it again. We are almost done. We are almost done. <clears throat> okay. So he says, but the, I'm right here. But the artful Europeans have so deceived them that they are bought by their inventions of merchandise and beguiled into it by their artifice. For the Europeans at their factories in some various manner have always kept some as servants to them and with gaudy clothes in a gay manner, well-dressed, well-to-do, happy, as decoy ducks to be deceived, uh, to deceive others and to tell them that they want many more to go over the sea and be as they are. So in that respect, wherein it may be said that they will sell one another, they are only ensnared and enlisted to be servants, kept like some of those which they see at the factories, which for some gigos as presents given to them selves and friends, they are thereby enticed to go. And something after the same manner that East Indian soldiers are procured in Britain. The inhabitants here just as much sell themselves and one another as they do. And the kidnappers here and the slave procurers in Africa are much alike. Or much alike. Okay. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna read this last bit and I'm done. This last bit. This last bit that starts, but again, right here, and then I'm done. But again, as to the Africans selling their own wives and children, nothing can be more opposite 
to everything they hold dear and valuable. And nothing can distress them more than to part with any of their relations and friends. Such are the tender feelings of parents for their children that for the loss of a child, they seldom can be rendered happy. Even with the intercourse and enjoyment of their friends for years, for any man to think that it should be otherwise, when he may see a thousand instances of a natural instinct, even in the brute creation, where they have a sympathetic feeling for their offspring, it must be great want of consideration not to think that much more than merely what is natural to animals should in a higher degree be implemented in the breast of every part of the rational creation of man. And what man of feeling can help lamenting the loss of parents, friends, liberty, and perhaps property and other valuable and dear connections. And let's close with go to Deuteronomy chapter 28. And verse 32. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fill with longing for them all the day long. And there shall be no might in thy land, in thy hand. There shall be no might. And so this is, this is the story. This is this man's account. And the Bible gave us, told us that these things would happen. And here we've read this man's account to see, hey, these things happen. We just read a firsthand account. Okay. And uh, we'll close with that. Um, once again, uh, to you who are uh, viewing this video uh, at home, please leave your, your comments and, and so forth um, in the field below. Um, if you would like to uh, come out to where we worship, by all means, leave your contact information that we can get in touch and uh, uh, begin to discuss uh, coming out and fellowshipping with children of Israel. To that we say, Shalom.